Take your Bible, if you will, please, and turn with me to Luke chapter 17. Luke chapter 17. Most of the times, not all the time, but most of the times on Wednesday nights, I simply share with you something from my own devotional life in uh, reading through the scripture on a regular basis. The Lord gives me a lot of, a lot of material. He really does. And so I can't share it all, but I can share some uh, bits and pieces with you. And what I want to share tonight is really how the, the first 19 verses of Luke 17 all fit together. The first 19 verses of Luke 17, how do they all fit together? Well, let me give you a hint. The disciples <clears throat> say to the Lord in verse 5, look at it in your Bible. Lord, increase our faith. And Jesus replies in verse 6, and he said, well, if you had faith as a grain of mustard seed, you might say under this sycamore tree, be thou plucked up by the root and be thou planted in the, in the sea, and it should obey you. Based on verses 5 and 6, what do you think the whole theme of the passage that we're looking at tonight is about? Answer? Faith. About faith. Exactly. Living by faith. Did you know, I'm sure you do, that the Christian life begins and ends with faith? Listen to what Hebrew says. The just, that means saved people, people that have been justified by faith, people that uh, are righteous because they're relying upon the righteousness of God by faith. The just shall live by faith. We live by faith. We're not only saved by faith, we live by faith. That's why the same writer of Hebrews goes on to say in the next chapter that without faith, it's impossible to please God. You can't please God without it because that's how we're supposed to live, by faith. Well, in this chapter, the disciples of Jesus asked Jesus in verse 5 to increase their faith. They felt the need to have their faith increased because they misunderstood what faith was. And I'd like to clear that up because I think there's a lot of misunderstanding about what faith is. They felt that faith was something that they had to achieve, that they had to work up, or that they had to work up to. But faith is just the opposite of any human achievement. So I want to begin tonight by simply defining it, by simply answering the question, what is faith? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we're thankful for this passage of Scripture. It's going to be helpful to us as we meditate upon it tonight. Simple and yet profound. That's how I would describe everything that you have to say in, in the Word of God. There, This is simple truth, and yet it, it's life-impacting. Lord, I pray tonight that you would give us ears to hear what you want to uh, speak to us about, and that uh, as a result, we would, uh, we'd hear, we'd respond, we'd apply, we'd, uh, we'd do, we'd just, our lives would be changed, that you transform us by this simple truth of what it means to live by faith. We'll give you the glory if we do so, in Jesus' name, amen. So what is faith? Well, faith is, as I've already said, it is vital for living the Christian life. Can't do it without it. But what I want to show uh, as we begin to define it, I think is how is faith measured? How do you measure faith? They're saying in verse five, increase our faith. But let's do a little measuring of faith. It's not something that can be measured by how much of it you possess. 
they thought it was. You know, in another passage, Jesus commends a Roman centurion because this man, Jesus said, had great faith. But that's not the same thing as having a great amount of faith. That's not what Jesus meant. What is great faith? Simply this. Great faith is faith in a great God. Great faith is faith in a great God's ability. That's how faith is measured. What is faith? Well, the meaning of it is very simply, very practically, very basically, very generally. Faith is simply dependence in God's unlimited ability. I'll repeat that. Faith is dependence upon God's unlimited ability. Faith, we sang it, and I don't know if you caught it, the words, faith is simply taking God at his word. Faith is taking God at his word and then moving forward accordingly, acting upon it because God said it. That's what faith is. Now, in the first six verses, and I've read verses five and six, but I'm going to go up to verse one and read the first four. And then you'll have them all in, in of the first six. Then said he unto the disciples, it's impossible that offenses will come. But woe unto him through whom they come. It were better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck and he cast into the sea than that he should offend one of these little ones. Take heed to yourselves. If your brother trespass against thee, rebuke him. And if he repent, forgive him. And if he trespass against thee seven times in a day, and seven times in a day turn again to thee, saying, I repent, thou shalt forgive him. In these first six verses, <clears throat> I want us to see why faith is needed. We just looked at what faith is. Why is faith needed? The thing that provoked the 12 disciples to ask Jesus to increase their faith, as they do in verse 5, is the matters that are faced in regular daily life. For example, the problem of obeying God and avoiding sin. When he talks uh, about... Uh, what he says in the first two verses. He's talking about sinning and causing others to stumble because of your life. Because of sin in your life, you cause others to follow your wrong example. You cause them to sin. By you not obeying God and his word, others stumble and fall as well. So one of the reasons why faith is so necessary is for because we can't obey without it. And if we can't obey God, then we're going to cause others to disobey God. And so faith is needed for obeying. Obedience requires faith. Whether we are seeking to avoid temptation ourselves to sin which may cause others to stumble and fall. You can't do it without faith. Remember what faith is. Faith is simply depending upon God's unlimited ability. It's taking God at his word. If God says, you don't have to sin, <laughs> there is a way of escape. If you will take God at his word and you will depend upon him, he will give you the ability to obey. You and I can never obey God simply by making up our minds that we're going to do it. We can conform outwardly 
to a certain degree, but he, but in our heart, in our heart, we really can't obey God without divine enablement. And even outwardly, there comes a point where we cannot obey God unless God enables us to do so. And so why is faith needed? Faith is needed for obeying because I and you cannot obey God without God's power, without God's strength, without God's ability undergirding us and giving us the grace to obey him. But then in verses three and four, here's another reason why faith is needed, not only for obeying, but for forgiving. There he's talking about someone offending you and uh, then repenting and you then forgiving them. Do you find it difficult to forgive people? Especially people, uh, uh, people that especially hurt you. When people offend you and the hurt is deep, you find it difficult to forgive them? Especially if they ask for forgiveness and then uh, sometimes soon after they do the same thing again over. You find that difficult to forgive people? That's why faith is needed, to be able to forgive over and over and over again, especially repeated offenses. You know, sometimes in a, in a, in a family, a family member will do something that is wrong against another family member, and then they get convicted and they say, you know, I'm sorry, forgive me, and we do, and then we do it again. The same thing again, and we have to. So, can you keep on forgiving? Forgiveness, it, true forgiveness, is impossible without faith. Because when you forgive God's way, what you're doing is saying, you know what? It's not up to me. It's not up to me to straighten this person out. It's not up to me to pay this person back. I'm going to trust God. I'm going to, to, to depend upon God to work in this person's heart and life. And so I'm going to forgive them because I'm going to commit them to the Lord and let him do what he needs to do in their heart and life. So this is two reasons right here why faith is needed for obeying and for forgiving. And the third thing that takes us to um, verses 7 to 10 is, how does faith work? Okay, we saw what it is. We saw why we need it, but how does it work? Well, at the end of the day, the bottom line when we avoid being a stumbling block by sinning or when we forgive and even forgive multiple offenses done to us by another person, how does faith work? Number one, it is humbling. Faith is a humbling, uh, is, is a, a means of humbling us. Look at verses seven to 10. That's what this is about. Uh, you know, for a long time, uh, I I was puzzled. How does this fit into what Jesus is saying? It fits in very nicely, and you'll see. Well, which of you, having a servant, plowing or feeding cattle, will say unto him by and by when he's come in from the field, oh, go sit down and eat. Go, go sit down to, to food, to meat. And will not rather say to the servant, make ready wherewith I may eat. So, gird yourself, serve me till I have eaten and drunken, and afterward thou shalt eat and drink. Doth he thank? Does the, the master, does he thank the servant because he did the things that were commanded of him? I don't think so. I trow not. So likewise... When ye sh uh, shall have done all those things which are commanded of you, 
we are unprofitable servants. Say, we are unprofitable servants. We have done that which is our duty. How does faith work? Well, it's, it's humbling. When we obey, when we forgive, there is nothing to pat ourselves on the back about. Because none of this, forgiving, obeying, or any other difficult part of our life or serving the Lord has been done by you mustering up a certain amount of faith. It's all by grace. It's all by dependence upon God's unlimited ability. And when you recognize, I can't obey, I can't forgive, I can't, and you claim by faith, you depend upon God who lives in you to strengthen you to obey or to forgive. When you recognize it's not I, but Christ in me, working through me, when you recognize that you're just an unprofitable servant, it simply means when he says, call yourself an unprofitable servant, he's simply saying, you recognize it's not me, but it's him. That's it. That's how it fits. That's how faith works. It's humbling. It's humbling because it's all of God. It's God at work. And I have nothing to boast of. So how does faith work? It's humbling. But let's look at verse 11 and 19 and see another aspect of how faith works. And it came to pass, as Jesus went to Jerusalem, he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered into a certain village, there met him 10 men that were lepers, which stood afar off because they were supposed to. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go show yourselves unto the priests. And it came to pass that as they did so, as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, see, they exercised faith, didn't they? And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, he turned back and with a loud voice glorified God, fell down on his face at Jesus' feet, giving him thanks. He was a Samaritan. And Jesus answering said unto, uh, said, where are the 10? Weren't there 10 cleansed? Where are the other nine? They are not found that return to give glory to God, save this foreigner. And he said unto him, Arise, go thy way, thy faith hath made thee whole. How does faith work? Well, it's, it's, it works by humbling us. And it also works not only by humbling, but by thanking. By thanking. What God does when you depend upon his unlimited ability, when you depend upon him, and he works, that has to be met with gratitude. Because our thanks to God, it affirms the fact that I'm personally unworthy, and God is absolutely good, and he is so great. I'm undeserving. I'm just a humble recipient of his power in everything that I depend upon him in the realm of God's will. So that's how it works. It's humbling, and it's, it uh, results in thanking. Now, some of you know I drive a truck every morning <clears throat> delivering meals. Well, one of the responsibilities, I have the same truck every day. Uh, it's my truck. And one of my responsibilities is to check the oil at least once a week in that truck engine run has to have oil in it you know the wear and tear on a vehicle uh, on on a vehicle's engine requires a proper amount of good lubricant you know uh, and so we have to check the oil level on a regular basis and and also have it changed regularly in fact the life of an engine really is greatly increased by adhering to a scheduled uh, oil maintenance 
when you think of it, all the gears and pulleys and shafts that are turning, all of the pistons going up and down, the valves opening and closing, as well as the sand and dirt and, and uh, the grime that uh, gets mixed in to all of that. It demands a good quality and a good supply of oil. Well, what am I talking about oil for? Because in the Christian life, with all the movement, with all of the activity, along with the wearing away caused by the grime of worry and fear and other difficulties, you have to live by faith. Faith is the oil of the Christian life. Faith is the lubricant of the Christian life. Faith is trust in God. Faith is a moment-by-moment -moment dependence upon God each step of the way. You need to check your faith level. Do you need to have your oil changed? That is, does your faith need to be changed from dependence upon you or someone else or something else to God alone? living by faith. It's what the life of the believer is all about.